Hey guys, so episode 2 of Locks Nest Collections. Uh, two weeks ago we did our inaugural episode on the Nintendo Game Boy and Nintendo Game Boy Color, which I thought was okay. People were very nice in the comments, liking, subscribing, but come on guys, the audio quality was atrocious. I feel terrible. My mic died. I've been having a tough month with technical problems. I've been losing uh, footage. I've had uh, corrupted data. We've had thunderstorms uh, where I've had blackouts and brownouts and, you know, it just hasn't been my month for recording stuff, but I have to thank everyone for, you know, actually making the video look better than it really was. I appreciate that. This episode will be much better, I guarantee that. So before we get into the Sega Game Gear, uh, I had mentioned that there would be a contest. The first 50 new subscribers, and you guys hit 50 subscribers in a day and a half, so thank you very much. I think we're over 60 now, but I did mention, guys, the first 50 subscribers. So if you're a subscriber after that, you won't be in the drawing, but thank you for subscribing. I hope I make content that you'll enjoy and want to come back for, and yes, there will be another giveaway coming up soon anyway. So what I'm going to do is have the winner's name pop up somewhere on the screen during this video and all you have to do is send me your address so I can mail it out to you. So what the prize is going to be is a Game Boy. I'm giving you a Game Boy. A Game Boy. I'm giving away a Game Boy. So for the winner, congratulations. Thank you for watching the video and being a subscriber. And just send me your mailing address in a DM and I will get this out to you as soon as possible. But while I am in the generous mood, for this week's episode, all you need to do at the end of the episode is tell me your thoughts on the Game Gear and let me know what system you think I should show you next, something in my collection. And guys, I have almost everything, even if it's one or two games or 300 games. Just let me know what you'd like to see next and you'll be entered for the next contest. And the next contest is going to be, I'm giving away a digital download code for Batman the Killing Joke. If you don't want it, just let me know. If you do, just mention that as well. So I'm giving that code away. I bought the movie yesterday. I watched it. I thought it was a lot better than the way the critics kind of like panned it. They were saying, you know, the, the Batgirl sequence at the beginning didn't really make sense. They didn't like the artwork. For me, guys, I thought it was really good. I'd give it a solid 8 on 10. But again, I'm rambling. Let's take a look at my Sega Game Gear collection. The Game Gear is an 8-bit handheld game console released by Sega in October of 1990 in Japan. 1991 in North America and Europe, and 1992 in Australia. The Game Gear primarily competed with the Nintendo Game Boy, the Atari Lynx, and the NEC's Turbo Express. The handheld shares much of its hardware with the Master System and is able to play its own titles as well as those of the Master System, the latter being made possible by the use of an adapter. Containing a full-color backlit screen with a landscaping format, Sega positioned the Game Gear as a technologically superior handheld to the Game Boy. Over 300 games were released for the Game Gear, although at the time of launch there was only initially 6 games available. Prices for game cartridges at the time ranged from $20 to $30. The casings were molded black plastic with a rounded front end to aid with removal. Some of the titles for the system included Sonic the Hedgehog, Shinobi, Space Harrier, and Land of Illusion starring Mickey Mouse, which are considered some of the best games on the system. Support for the Game Gear by Sega was drastically hurt by its focus on its home console systems. In addition to the success of the Genesis, Sega was also supporting two peripherals for its home system, the Sega CD and the 32X, as well as developing its new 32-bit system, the Sega Saturn. Despite selling over 10 million units by March of 1996, the Game Gear was never able to match the success of its main rival, the Game Boy, which sold over 10 times those numbers. The system's late sales were further hurt by Nintendo's release of the Game Boy Pocket, which is the smaller version of the Game Boy, and which also could run on three AAA batteries. The Game Gear required six AA batteries. It was a battery eater. 
Several accessories were created for the Game Gear during its lifespan. A TV tuner accessory plugged into the system cartridge slot and allowed one to watch TV on the Game Gear screen, which I thought was one of the coolest things at the time. There was also the Super Wide Gear, which was an accessory that magnified the Game Gear screen to compensate for its relatively small size. Also released was two adapters known as the Game Gear Car Adapter and the Big Battery Adapter. One obviously plugged into the cigarette lighter to power the system while traveling, and the other was an additional battery pack that you could wear on your belt to carry around. Again, this thing ate through batteries, so it was needed to have additional power. So this is almost everything I have for the Sega Game Gear. I do have the carrying case which is in storage and I do have the battery pack which is also in a bin of accessories that will just never get used and it's piled under stuff. I debated if I wanted to take them out for the purpose of this video but it's just so much trouble guys and it's so much easier just to show you a picture of what they look like but trust me they are there. So these are all my games and all of my systems. So I'll start off with the system itself. I have four now. At my height I had six. I sold one a few years ago on one of the online yard sales and I actually recently had given one away as a prize for I think my 1000 subscriber contest on the main channel. And the cool thing about this one, if you can see here that old sticker, this is my original Sega Game Gear and it still works. So on the back we have two battery packs for three double A batteries on each side, six batteries for this guy and you know like you could probably check and find a, a more accurate uh, battery amount than what I can give you but I would say not longer than two to four hours. You know aesthetically though it is very nice, uh, you can put a handle on them, there was other features that you could attach to them but just you know it felt like it had really good weight, the screen was nice, the color looked good. Uh, obviously I like the Game Boy better but this was always something fun to have and for a while you were like the cool or the rich kid if you had the Sega Game Gear. Hmm. The one boxed item I have for the Game Gear is NBA Action starring David Robinson and it's not sealed it's just in plastic to protect the, the box from when it was sold again and I don't have any aspiration of actually taking the plastic off just to keep the integrity of the box what's left and I'm not really going to play a basketball game on the Game Gear. So here's my Game Gear collection guys. 31 games, not huge but at the same time you know like it's got a fair amount of games in there after going through all my cases. Now there are some duplicates and that's just because finding uh, a, game, a Game Gear by itself usually comes with a few games and some of these are more common titles so you see them a lot more frequently. So uh, before we get into this, uh, when I go out to flea markets and yard sales and I come across Game Gear games, I don't want to pay ever, like $5 is the most, most that I'll pay for a game and it's got to be something that I want. I used to pick these up fairly easy back in the day for like a dollar, two dollars, but you know the times that we're in and the retro craze that this doesn't happen anymore, but a good rule of thumb is like five bucks should be the max for a Game Gear game. And starting with my games, and of course we're going to start with duplicates right away. Mortal Kombat 2, another copy of Mortal Kombat 2, The Lucky Dime Caper, Donald Duck, Cheese Cat Catastrophe, Speedy Gonzales, WrestleMania Steel Cage Challenge, Sonic the Hedgehog 2, Mickey's Ultimate Challenge, Cool Spot, Sonic Chaos. Row number two, Mortal Kombat, Outrun Europa, X-Men Game Master's Legacy, X-Men, Shinobi 2, Sonic the Hedgehog 2 again, Beavis and Butthead, Sonic the Hedgehog Triple Trouble, Spider-Man Return of the Sinister Six. Row number three, Columns. Bonkers Wax Up. Remember Bonkers? The Majors Pro Baseball. Another copy of X-Men. Another copy of Shinobi 2. Another copy of Sonic the Hedgehog 2. Legend of Illusion starring Mickey Mouse. World Series Baseball. Castle of Illusion starring Mickey Mouse. And our top row, Pac-Man. 
Sonic the Hedgehog, which is very different than the Genesis version. I think it's more like the Master System version, but I can't tell you for sure. Puzzle Bobble. Desert Speed Trap, starring Roadrunner and Wile E. Coyote. Streets of Rage 2. This holds up on the Game Gear. Love that game. Another copy of Sonic the Hedgehog 2. Batman Returns. Pretty fun on the Game Gear. Hey, look, another copy. Batman Returns. Tasmania. And that, guys, is my 30 loose carts and, again, my one boxed NBA action. So this is, with the exception of the carrying case and the battery pack, the entirety of my GameCube GameCube, my Game Gear collection as of August 2016. So that's everything that's in my Sega Game Gear collection, guys. I hope you found this episode a little bit informative, maybe even entertaining. So congratulations again to our winner. I hope you saw your picture pop up. If not, you know, better, better luck next time, guys. There's going to be another contest. Like I said, if you want your chance to get the Killing Joke digital download code, all you need to do is tell me what kind of collection you'd like to see next. Whether I have two games for that console or I have 300, just put it down in the comments and we'll pick one for next week.